Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Psalms 141, verse 3. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters. I ask Holy Spirit that you would set a guard on us. And we would produce fruit for life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. <laughs> I just declare over you life and wholeness. Prosperity. Health. In every area of your lives. Glory. At any rate, this morning the Lord said to me, guard your words carefully. Be careful what you say. And that's really true. We need to watch what we say, how we say things. We need to have a guard placed over our mouths. If uh, any one of us could say that the words that come forth from my mouth and out of my heart are pure, <laughs> then you don't need to watch this, okay? <laughs> you can go, go have a good time today. Be blessed. But if you're like me, and sometimes you say things and you don't mean to say them, but they come out anyway, then uh, this this message is for you this morning. We, we need to have a guard placed over us. And a definition of guard is, <laughs> that's the definition is to watch over in order to protect or control sometimes we need to control our, our 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 mouths sometimes we begin to speak with awesome intentions and what comes out ends up putting somebody in bondage i had it happen to me i was at a prayer uh vigil or uh we get together at five in the morning at this church i went to back in the 1980s and uh we would begin to pray. Well, I had a brother and sister come over to me and they began to try to cast the demon out. And guess what? It wasn't much longer after that that I backslid. I got offended by what they said and, and, and it put a curse on me. The best of intentions ended up causing me to backslide. And you guys might not agree with that, but the truth of the matter is, is we can curse somebody and set in motion things that can cause a person to stumble and fall away. All it takes is a few words. I was always happily walking and running after the Lord up to that point. There was a lot of problems in my life, but I was still coming after God. And to have that thrown in my way. Say, you got a demon. We got to get rid of it. And I was like, oh, that's not what I needed to hear. It didn't bring life to me. In fact, right after that, I started, I, I started having lots of trouble. And myself, I started questioning things. So, you know, if we don't have a guard on our mouths, if we don't check it out against the word of God, we can really harm somebody's walk. So we, you know... We, we could speak a religious spirit over them. We, could, we create things with our mouths. Our mouths are that powerful. We have the power of creation in our tongues. And what comes from our heart. And sometimes we say things not even thinking about it. And somebody will try and correct what we're saying. And, and, and you know, uh, we, need to, we need to be careful of that too about who, about what we're doing with our correction. No, that ain't the way you should say it. <laughs> you know, that, that can, that can cause harm too. So we need to, we need to watch out when we're, we're getting ready to give a word of correction because somebody didn't uh, use verbiage quite right. You know, I've been corrected in my words and uh, I felt a little defensive when I got into that position, but I heard what the Lord said just, put his hand on my shoulder and said, just stand where you are, don't say anything. And, and so, uh, you know, sometimes we get to question the Lord on these things. And this is the word that he gave me this morning was, put a guard over your mouth, be careful what you say. And if we, if we look at that in a godly light, we're going to begin to speak life over people. We're not going to stand in judgment and condemnation over them. We're not going to be correcting them. We're not going to be bringing false words or false prophecies to people. 
You know, when we speak life, it should be for building. It should be for edification. It should be positive. Especially we as believers should be positive. We shouldn't be talking about how bad the government is. We shouldn't be talking about how bad our jobs are. We shouldn't be talking so negative and complaining. We should be talking positive. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> and in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. How, how are we speaking? There's another question. How are you speaking? What are you speaking? How are you talking? What do people hear coming out of your mouth? Are the best of your intentions coming directly from your heart, from a heart of ununderstanding, misunderstanding, not understanding, or, or, or is what's coming up out of your mouth from your heart, love, edification, build up, building up, not build up, well, I guess you could say build up. At any rate, uh, <laughs> sometimes our verbiage is incorrect. <laughs> And, and a lot of times what comes out of our mouth is, is exactly what's going on in our hearts. And we have to keep that thought in mind. If we go up to somebody and say, hey, brother, <laughs> I really think, you know, with an attitude that we're just about to overcome this person. Or are or, or we coming up to them and we're going, hey. I just want to edify you. I want to exhort you. I just want to lift you up. Because the Lord says you're awesome. And we bring life. Glory. And in James 1.26 it says, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. <laughs> we got to bridle our tongue. Sometimes we've got to stand guard over our mouths and watch what we say. You know, I was questioning the Lord this morning. That's how come I'm in this word now about something that was said. And the Lord told me, you need to guard your tongue. You need to watch what you say. You need to choose your words carefully. Now I'm starting to remember what the Lord said. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Choose your words carefully. The one thing Jesus never did was wasted words. Another thing Jesus never did was uh, bring death to anybody. <laughs> he always spoke life. He was positive. He, uh, you know, if you can find a place where Jesus is sentencing people to death, he says, if you choose where you're going to go, and he said, be wary of the Pharisees. But what he was talking about was a religious spirit. Be wary of a religious spirit. It will put you in bondage. Glory. Glory. We have to read the word through the eyes of the spirit. We have to pray before we begin to read the word. Otherwise, we get off track and think we're going to be lifting and bearing a cross. And pretty soon, sin's going to be running from us. Is it not true? Jesus said to take his yoke and his burden that he gives you. They're light. They're easy. They will give you rest. I don't know how that looks for you, but for me, that looks like I need to be seeking him. Glory. Praise the name of the Lord. And in James 3, 4 through 10, it says, Look at the ships also, though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder. Whether the will of the pilot, wherever the will of the pirate, pirate, pilot directs. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord, that I can read. <laughs> Glory. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest, how great a forest is set ablaze by such small, by such a small fire. Hey, I'm having nothing but trouble this morning. Glory. Praise your name, Lord. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, straining the whole body, setting on fire the, ent the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. 
where every kind of beast and birds of reptile and sea creatures can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessings and cursings. My brothers, these things not ought to be so. <laughs> well, <laughs> glory to God. I know my reading skills are bad today. <laughs> and that's all right. Praise the Lord, because you can go on and read it for yourself. <laughs> you don't need me to really read. I can just give you the, the reference, scripture reference, and you can go read it yourself. So, praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for this, because, you know, if, if we begin to place a guard, and begin to protect our tongue, if we protect our mouth, it's really protecting us when we when we guard ourselves, when we guard our conversation, when, when we uh, don't allow death to come out of our mouths, when we don't allow curses to come out of our mouths, when we don't allow what we're saying to derail a brother or sister. When we, when we begin to bring life, that brother and sister back in the 1980s could have came to me and said, Hey, you are an awesome brother in the Lord, and we just want to lift you up and, and, and tell you how precious the Lord knows you to be. Something to that order. It, it could have been a, a word that would have brought life. But as it was, my journey, <laughs> my testimony was still being formed and built. So I went back out and started building it. And so I just want to exhort you this morning to ask the Holy Spirit to place a guard over your mouth. To watch over your door of your lips. Watch over the door of your lips. And I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. I am running so late. I don't know if this video is going to get out. I just thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace upon my brothers and sisters. And I thank you for this word. And I ask that you bind it to our hearts and speak to us, Lord God, the things we need to hear through this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Glory. I'm just going to play real quick. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this up.
Let your life be live in worship, driven by faith. Talk your ear. Say, yes, Lord, what are you saying? Yes, Lord, I hear you. Father, let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. And you might ask, what is spirit and in truth? It's our lifestyle. It's how are we living our lives? Are we living by faith? Are we a people of faith, justified by faith, justified by what Jesus did, living in the hope of His glory? We are. One more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Beloved, if you just get along with him, just begin to praise him and thank him and, and let him undo you. Let him undo you. <laughs> let him turn you into the person that he created you to be from glory to glory. Amen. Lord, that's a good word for anybody. <laughs> See ya. Bye.